Good morning, my name is Jo with Jo Wise Leadership and today we're going to be having a chat about decision making. Um, so I'm just going to take a moment to share this with a couple of my other pages whilst we've got some people coming on. It is a beautiful sunny day in Melbourne today. I hope it is wherever you are. All right, we'll just wait for a few people to come on and we'll get kicked off today. All right. Share to a couple of my pages. Excellent. Okay, so thank you. We've got a couple of people starting to join us. So today I wanted to have a chat about decision making. And the reason that I wanted to the reason that I wanted to share this particularly today is because I spoke at a Women in Leadership conference last week for a couple of days. Um, I emceed, so I had the chance to listen to all of the speakers as well as speak myself but also do um, you know sort of wrap up the content of every single speaker and then have question time and sort of listening to the questions and having a chat to to all of the people there's probably about a hundred people in the room so it was it was really great to be there to get so sort of just to be able to listen to be a bit of an observer as well and one of the things that came up with a lot of the speakers and and sort of the questions was around decision making um, now, obviously, I work with women in leadership, you know, women that are leaders, um, you know, whether they have the title or they simply would like to see themselves as a leader or they are a leader. Um, and one of the really interesting things that I found out since doing a bit more research about this um, was that there's this great perception out there and it's supported by lots of articles and lots of data that women don't make very good decisions. Good morning, Jane. Nice to see you. Or not even that women don't make good decisions, but they certainly don't make as strong decisions as men do. And also there's a perception out there that um, when it comes to tough decisions, that women will struggle around making decisions. So I thought this was really interesting because as soon as I, he I heard that, of course, like you, like even me saying this, it's gonna be pressing some of your buttons. Good morning, Anne-Marie, nice to see you. And hi, Shivani. Um, so, I did a little bit of a digging, you know, a bit of a digging into this research about the fact that women don't make as strong decisions and when it comes to to tough decisions, women just don't have what it takes. Good morning, Lisa. Um, and when I dug down a little bit, I recognized a couple of things. One is that um, a lot of the really well-known decision-making books, you know, like the, the models that we follow in particularly corporate organizations are written, interestingly enough, by men um, and therefore when they're sort of they're writing these books and telling us these are the models that we have to take anything that falls outside of that so if we take any other different systems or we use use some different things like our intuition for example with making decision making that's seen as being a weaker decision interestingly enough because it's absolutely not true women make fabulous decisions and in fact um, you know, obviously we can make very strong decisions and we make extremely tough decisions as well. However, what I wanted to speak about today is the perception and this myth that women can't make decisions because there's actually things that we're doing in our decision making process that's going to perpetuate that myth rather than bust the myth. So let's have a bit of a chat about a couple of those things today. The first thing is collaboration. When we collaborate around making decisions, that's a really, really good thing. It, um, I, I believe most of the women that I work with tend to collaborate really naturally as women. And it's something that we see as a part of our decision-making process. And even though all of the data and all of the studies show that collaboration around decision-making will make for more quality decisions, from an internal process, internal as far as inside a corporate, when we collaborate around decision-making, 
it's seen as a weaker trait around decision making, which is really interesting, isn't it? Because we know, and the, the data shows, that collaboration around decision making leads to more quality decision making. However, it's seen as a, a bit of a weakness. And this goes back to what I said, where most of the decision making models have been, and, and famous books have been written by men, and collaboration is seen as something that falls outside of that. Therefore, it has to be weak, right? Um, even though it leads to more quality decision. So interesting. Now, there's a couple of things that when we are making our decisions, when we're talking about this, that I will come back to the collaboration because there's some things that we can do when we are collaborating, which will still come allow us to come out with a stronger presence and a, creating a stronger perception around us with making decisions. The second thing is, so the first thing was collaboration. The second thing is it sometimes leads to us being seen as creating that perception that we're not as great decision makers is that we take more factors into account. Women in general will take more time to make the decision and will take more factors into account than the masculine brain will, or will generally, or the masculine mindset will generally. Now, one of the things that I want to um, bring into your perspective with thinking about this is, yeah, we can take more things into perspective and that's great, but just keep in mind what you are bringing in. So what are the extra things that you're bringing in? Is it going to move you forward with your decision making or is it just going to clog the pipes there a bit and bring in more information and then you can't see the forest for the trees? So even though naturally we will tend to look at more things, which again is, is a great strength of ours when making decision making, just making sure that you're taking the right factors into account. And the other thing there is, is not getting bogged down with too much other information. I mean, you know, I've read a lot of things when looking at this, you should, you know, too much, there's never too much information when making decision making, but I don't think that's right because not all information is equal, as you could say. So just making sure that you're seeing the trees in the forest um, and that you're keeping in mind what the purpose of you bringing all of this extra information into account is around making a decision around a particular thing. So get clear on what your outcome is. Even if you don't know the actual outcome, what is it that you're supporting the information? You know, what's the, what's the decision that you need to make and what's the information you're seeking out around that? The third one is having an authoritative tone. Now, yes, we collaborate. Yes, we seek inf extra information that helps us make even more quality decisions. Quite often though, with women, it is actually, or, or with anybody actually, when we ask questions, we have what's called an inflection at the end of our tone. So if I was to ask a question of somebody, a natural question like, um, um, and I've spent, I've done so much work on my language where I don't use the inflection nearly as much, so I have problems using it. But if I was asked you a, a question like, how's the weather today? Then it goes up today. And then automatically and unconsciously in the listener's mind, they want to give us an answer. They want to, to give us advice. They want to, to answer our question, even if it's not a question, because unconsciously the tone went up at the end and therefore we are asking a question. It's called questioning tone. So when we are collaborating with others and seeking out further information, yes, you can still ask questions. Just be very clear with every single time you have that inflection going up, it actually creates the perception of uncertainty in the listener's mind. So if you are asking a question, there are times when we'll ask questions, and we do this a lot in coaching, we will ask the question with an authoritative tone, giving the perception that the, the, the person we're speaking to already has the answers inside of them. So it's a great way of, of commanding confidence and, um, yeah, and clarity in the, in the conversations that we're having. So when we're communicating, asking questions or making comments, just be very clear with how we end the sentence and what the inflection is. If it's going up, then that's going to automatically um, give the person that we're speaking to or the group or people in the meeting that perception of uncertainty. So it's okay to ask a question, obviously. We want to ask questions to seek out further information. We can still ask questions with a more authoritative tone with where the inflection will stay the same or will drop down. So I'm very keen to hear your information, you know, I'm very, here to, very keen to hear your input on this. Could you please help me with this information? Rather than, can you help me with this information? 
Okay, so that's the inflection and creating a more authoritative tone. Now this is not just around decision making, this is in all of your communication. The other one is, the next one, so number four is filler words. This was really interesting um, when I was at the conference last week, is one of the speakers you know, that was up there speaking, was she, she, when she stood up to speak, she said, you know, I'm not a speaker. Um, I'm very, you know, very uncomfortable about being here. And then she continued to use lots and lots of filler words. And as me being, you know, the person that was sitting back and watching, it was really interesting to see the perception of people in the audience that you could tell she, that she automatically dropped down as far as the credibility goes. It's okay to own it and say, you know, I'm not comfortable about being here in front of the room, but she used lots and lots of ums and ahs and maybe and possibly in her language. And you could just see the body language of people in the audience change and her credibility dropped as a speaker at the front of the room. So be aware when you're making decisions, when you're collaborating, when you are seeking further information and using your authoritative tone, um, that even when we're uncertain about what we're saying, it's better to have a little bit of a gap in your words rather than filling it with the arms and the R's and the actuallys and all of the extra bits and pieces that go in. One of the interesting things I learned many years ago is somebody said to me is, when, when I was sort of working my way up as a leader, one of the leaders that I was speaking to actually said to me, think a little bit more before you speak in meetings, which was really great feedback for me, because you're feeling the space all of the time. And all she said was, think about if you were writing an email, you wouldn't add the, e, the ums and the ahs and the I thinks and this possibly and all of those things into a sentence at all. You would just simply say the words that you need to say. And so I think that's one of the things that comes across a lot of the time with women is we, we like to fill the space a lot of the time. So just get clear on your message or your question and ask that question or say what it is you want to say without all of the fluff, without all of the filler there. It will allow the other person to feel much more confident in your message and will actually save you a lot of time as well because you get right to the point. Yeah? Um, and the final one is to trust yourself. You know, if we are telling ourselves all of the time that we make really crappy decisions, that we're uncertain, I really don't know what to do here, then our unconscious mind is going to support us with that. It's going to support us with the fact that, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. It's going to be looking for evidence that you do not know what you're doing. Now, there's many times when I've made decisions that I'm uncertain about, um, and I've even put off decisions, which I'll speak about in a moment. Um, and I think all of us have at one stage, but telling ourselves we're, we're not great at making decisions or we're weak at making decisions only perpetuates that within us as well. So starting to trust yourself with making decisions. Go out there and keep collaborating. Just do it in a more authoritative way that creates certainty. Um, you know, seek more information, absolutely. There's actually a lot of data out there that shows that women will collect as much data when making decisions as men do, because um, there's sort of a myth there that we trust our intuition even more, but the data doesn't back that up. I do think, however, that we have a, lot, a really strong intuition that we can bring into play with our decision makings more often. Um, so see how you go with that. But just trusting yourself with making, making decisions and seek out what you need to seek out find out the information you need to find out um, and look for the data where you need to. You know, some decisions we can just make quite quickly, but it's usually the bigger decisions that we, we wanna seek a bit more data. Because one of the things we do as humans is if we don't have the information we need or if we don't have the information and there's some gaps in our knowledge, then quite often we'll just make it up. Now, you know, if we're making up information about decision making, then that may or may not be helpful. But think about it, when you're making a decision, and we're sitting there and we're, if you're feeling a bit uncertain about it, oh, I'm not certain about this, I don't know what the decision is I'm making, your unconscious mind's going to be saying, we'll be supporting you and yes, I'm going to bring you all of the evidence where you don't know what you're doing, which is not helpful when you're making decisions. And also a part of our brain's going to be making things up. So what I mean by that is if you want to go and ask somebody about their opinion and you think, oh no, they're too busy or they won't be interested or, or this type of thing, that's when you're making up information. So just go and ask the person the question. Ask for, your, ask for their support in your decision making and keeping in mind that when you are seeking out information from other people or data, different opinions, then quite often, 
I'm absolutely very guilty of this, where I will quite often go and seek information from people that I know that think like me. And that's going to support the decision that I want to make, not necessarily the right decision. So it's a really good idea, and this is something I've been working on a lot over the last couple of years, is when I'm seeking support, go and ask somebody that doesn't think like me. You know, that may make me feel a little bit uncomfortable because they're going to be thinking differently than me and they'll be able to bring different things to the decision making table to help me make a better quality decision. So, everybody is able to make fabulous decisions. Obviously, the more we work up in our leadership, whether that's you know in where we have a title as a leader or running our own businesses or leading our own lives as, as such, is there's going to be, the more we work our way up, there's going to be more decisions and possibly even more higher quality decisions that have to be made. So get out there and do collaborate. Do so asking questions and making comments and asking for advice with a more authoritative tone. Drop all of the fillers out of your language. This is what we call clean language, so that it just drops rid of all of that and that will automatically drop out that uncertainty when you're speaking to other people around that other person. Um, so drop the filler words. Trust yourself as well around making decisions. The more decisions you make, the better you will become at making a decision. It's like building a muscle at the gym. You know, the more we practice that, the better we will get. Hi, Tony. Good morning, Sharon. Nice to see you both. So that is what I have to bring to the table today about decision making and some of the learnings that I have um, that have been brought into my awareness again over the last week of speaking at a Women in Leadership conference. And look, if you need a bit of a bit of help at the moment with getting your career on on your on the right path or taking your leadership to the next level, but doing it in a sustainable way where we don't need to burn out. That's what I'm super passionate about. So if you'd like to have a chat to me around coaching or maybe bringing some trainings into your organization, then give me a call. Um, you can PM me or check out my website, which is joewiseleadership.com. And I've got a great new leadership up with lots of information about our coaching programs and our training programs. So have an amazing week and I'll look forward to speaking to you soon. And just ask yourself one final thing. What are the decisions that I'm putting off? Or what's the perception that I create with my, my decision making in my leadership position and see what you can do about taking that to the next level. Have an amazing day and I'll see you soon. Bye.